So we learned about cutting sharp things with a knife, even if the knife is not ben yoma. And we learned that the knife, if it's a milchik knife or a fleshik knife, that it makes that radish or the sharp thing that you cut, it makes it fleshik or milchik, or if you cut it with a forbidden knife, it makes it forbidden, at least kadei klipa, kadei natila, which is that much on both sides. Some people say it spreads through the whole entire uh, vegetable. Okay, simon sadek zayin. We'll see, maybe at a later date we'll actually learn smicha, we'll do the shocks and the tazas, and the, uh, they will make uh, different opinions. Very interesting. Let's just do a little bit of this. Last chapter of milk and meat. These are laws that I don't know if everybody knows them, but they're very important. Simon Sadik Zion, you are not allowed to make a milchik dough. Law number Aleph. In Lushin, you are not allowed to knead, knead, K N E A, knead, Isa, a dough with milk. Want to make a milchik a dough? Find something else to do. Don't do it. Unless you make a sign on that dough that you know for sure it will, you're never going to eat this together with meat. Never make a <clears throat> bread, cookies, anything that are milchak. Unless, we'll see what the unless is. Unless. Let's go back to the beginning. Olive. In Lush what if it's like chocolate chip cookies? Then are, you to, then are you allowed to add, then are you allowed to put chocolate? In Just the, a minute. Just a minute. Let's have a little patience here. I'm not going to make your chocolate cookies forbidden. But you should worry. Listen, at least worry for three minutes until we get to the end of the law. In Lushin, you are not allowed, but you asked a good question. In Lushin, you are not allowed to make a dough from milk. Why? Shema yavo la'achlo, because maybe you will eat the final product, the cookies, chocolate, cook, chocolate chip cookies, or your bread, you'll eat it with meat. So you want to make a bread from milk? Well, let's finish the law, but if you don't finish the law, then this is what you're going to have to do. Throw it away. Throw it in the garbage. You made a bread from milk. You have two choices. Either throw it in the garbage or finish learning this law. What would you rather do? Finish learning the law? Finish learning the law. Okay, finish. let's see. The im lush call a pot usher. If you do make a milchika bread, the whole bread is forbidden, even to eat it alone. But, if it was a very small amount, and you for sure are going to eat it at once, or you made it into a different form, so that you can see clearly that it's milk, you'll never eat this together with meat, mutar, then it's permissible. So if your chocolate chip cookies are going to be put into a, uh, whatever it is, a special bag or have a sign on it, or if you just make a few chocolate cookies that you know you can eat it at one time, you're not going to leave them over, right? You're not going to leave it over unobserved so that your little brother will come in after he finishes eating his Pulke and say, Oh wow, a chocolate chip cookie. This is just what I want. Thank you, Hashem. And he eats it because there's not nobody watching it. So, therefore, if you want to make just enough chocolate cookies that they're going to be there while you're there, and as soon as you finish with them, as soon as you leave the room, you're always going to be there's going to there's no not going to be any chocolate chip cookies left then you can do it. Or if you make them in an unusual shape, 
so that you know for sure that these cookies are milchik, or the bread is milchik, or something similar. Okay, that's it. Okay, so there's two ways that you can make milchik of bread. If you only make a little bit of it and you're going to eat it right there, you're not going to leave any over so that people can trip up on it and eat it together with meat. Or you make it in a special, unusual form so that you'll never come, even if you do leave it alone, some will say, wow, this bread looks weird. Hmm, this must be milchik. Here's a similar thing. Ain ofin pat batanur. You are not allowed to bake bread in an oven or on a pan. Shetachu, that was smeared ba'aliyah with fat from an animal, animal fat. Vim afal, and if you do cook bread in a on, on a pan or whatever that was smeared with animal fat, kosher animal fat. Dino ke'isa t'yelanusa b'cholav. It's the same law as dough that was made with milk. It is forbidden, unless you make just a little bit of it that you can eat right now, or you make it in an unusual shape. What's the best advice? Don't make fleshika or milchika bread. Don't do it. <clears throat> Let's look at the uh, haga. Look, and therefore, no again, the custom is the loj pat to knead, K N E A D, bread with milk for the holiday of Shvuot. Some people also make special chalas, fleshik for Shabbat. Why? He calls them mechashev gadavamur because it's considered to be a little bit. And also, the form that you make in is a little bit different. That's why I think why people. Uh, bread, how do you braid their bread, their chalas, so that because they used to make them fleshic. So now everybody knows you have a, you have a braided bread that's probably fleshic. It's in a different form, even though nowadays I don't think they do that. But they just left over the braided bread. Nowadays, the, the, the bread that's braided, like when Shabbos, there's another reason you shouldn't eat it with milk, and that was it was it's on the table. It was on the table together with meat, even though you didn't make the bread with meat, but it's on the table with meat, so people sometimes touch it with their hands. Also, the, the form of this bread, the Shabbos bread, is different from other breads. We call Shekhinah much more paladan, paladan or pashtida, that's made with meat inside of it. This is permissible. The Ein Lafot Shum Pat, you should never bake bread together with this Paladan or pashtida, this whatever it is, uh, meaty noodles or something. Don't do it. Why? And the tanner, chayshinim, because we were worried. And those don't put it on the same, on the same pan. You put your bread over here, and you put your uh, kugel, meat kugel, on the same pan. Don't do it because maybe it will flow, mina shuman, from the melted fat that is in your kugel to the bread. Vim zav tachtav, and if it really does flow underneath it, then the law is as though it was kneaded together with it. That makes the bread fleshic. The custom is, is to put ha tefela bepia tanur, to put the one that's not fat on the entrance of the oven, even if it is they used to have, nowadays we don't do this, but it used to be they had ovens that they would make it a little bit tilted back in because they didn't want all the fats and things like that to spill all over the floor. It would tilt it a little bit back. So therefore, the best one is if, if you, you want some reason or other to cook meat together with bread and you haven't got any other place, so at least put the bread or whatever it is in the front of the oven and this in the back. I, what about the smell? What about this? We'll learn in when we learn the laws of Taruvot, if we learn the laws of Taruvot, and that's called Recha Milta. Is smell of a thing considered to be a thing? We'll learn about that, God willing, uh, if we decide to learn Taruvot. We have two more laws. We'll learn those tomorrow, and we'll finish. We'll make our sium sort of on Basar Bechalov. Basar Bechalov. Have a good day, everyone.
God bless you all. See you tomorrow, 8.15 in the morning. Please be prompt. Shalom.